Hey, welcome back to Kerrigan Fishing. I'm Adam Kerrigan. Uh, man, beard's looking awful wintry. May have to get that under control soon. Yeah, so it's winter, and uh, the bite hasn't just been tough lately. I mean, it's hard to find water that isn't hard <laughs> right now. Everything's frozen, and that means that this is a great time of year for, uh, you know, the kind of stuff that I talk about regularly, maintenance, improvements, uh, taking care of your game that's uh, not necessarily on the water. Um, the little things that you do to prepare for getting out there. Um, so yeah, today's video is, you know, uh, I guess an example of the kind of stuff that, you know, we as the Legion of Anglers aspire to do. Um, people have asked in the past, like, what does it mean that you guys are a team, right? Um, this is it. Every one of us has our own unique skill sets, our, you know, our own abilities, our own tools, uh, you know, and, and, and we're there for each other, you know, when a situation comes up where those skills are, or tools are needed. Um, Rashawn had an idea for uh, modularizing a crate that he is going to keep on, you know, his links build. And hopefully y'all are following that over at Infamous Fishing on his YouTube channel. It's pretty fascinating. Um, you know, he's basically going through a, a full-on build from scratch on, on a Hobie Lynx. Um, it's designed to be lightweight. It's it's kind of a paddleboard slash kayak hybrid platform, which is really pretty cool. And the objective is to keep it everything as small as it can possibly be. So when it comes to onboard electronics, uh, that and he's planning on having a lot of them, um, you know, the smaller your space is, the, the harder it can be to make sure you're managing that space. So we had an idea to take a junior-sized Hobie crate and create a uh, removable, basically a board for the mounting of the onboard distribution power source, the, the battery itself and the distribution system that it uses. And there's also future plans for a regulator, but he didn't want to have to cut into any of his equipment. So, you know, it turns out I've got everything that we would possibly need for uh, doing that kind of a build. And, you know, I just wanted to document how it went. Two guys from the Legion getting together, figuring out solutions and uh, sharing them with the world. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay. So what exactly is the vision that you're shooting? So the vision is, and I left the other battery because I don't have it. Well, I'm trying to get up here on time. <laughs> well, a couple hours like, late. Uh, I missed all that. That was silly. So the purpose, I want to use the board itself. Okay. To mount this. Okay. To mount this on here. All right. But I need to cut it so that it is here. Okay. So wait, what you're talking about is we're making a plate that mounts yeah to the inside of this and then all of your you know digitals are going to mount to that plate and so you can slide the plate in and out without having to worry about the whole crate yeah so it's on the inside in here yeah the issue is that the battery comes out this far so that puts you at about two and a half inches two and a half inches out so whatever we put in here is going to press that out even farther it would be nice to fit right here into this. Mm -hmm. Into this part here completely. Yeah. I was going to mount this little light on the back. Okay. Like so that's facing backwards or facing forward? Face, so my seat's here. Okay. So, so your, back, your battery's going to be up against your back. Okay. So this would be this, my seat's here. Uh -huh. Battery's inside here. So if it goes dark or something like that, mm -hmm. I can switch on the little red light and just leave, give me some light. Putting a motor on the links. Mm -hmm. like this is another project. I'm gonna to have to have my my orb to that. So this actually, I gotta keep my orb mounts to here. Okay. Which is the pole. Okay. And then I still have the battery in here, but then eventually I'm gonna to have to run wires. Can I see your lights? Your your light bar? Would you be able to put the light here? No. And, and the H rail stuff to mount on that bar. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So what do you? So what do you think? So what? Cutting it out and all that other good stuff. That's getting this to the size that you want it to be. That's not an issue. We can get that done easy. Fast. 
So for the for the sake of the video, the product that we're messing around with here is called a uh, marine starboard, and you know it's 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 basically like a high density or medium density plastic designed specifically for watercraft applications. And the beauty of this product, right? It's expensive as all heck, right? But the beauty of this product is that you can work with common household tools. Anything you have that works for wood will work just as well uh, for, for this product right here. Plus thirty dollars in Marine West Marine. Yeah. Sure. Let's see if you can give yourself a nice little as much as leftover as you can. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I'm noticing is that this is tapered. Right? So if I if I draw this, you'll see that it's got a little curve to it. Alright, now how high up does your um well, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna. Well, the cover just pops in here. Okay, so these holes need to be exposed. Well, no, it doesn't even go. To, it just on the outside it pops in. It's not gonna go. Right, but if they're gonna go all the way through, then yeah, it's, it won't mess with. Then, it. then this, like, how big is the wingnut that you're gonna be dealing with? For it? It's an inch wingnut for a cover. No, it's just tabs that pop in. But oh, sweet. Okay, so but they don't even go that far. So this can you can actually go all the way, all the way to the end. end. Yep. All right, and then this sits <coughs> up against that. All right, so that that's my framework right there. So grab my combination square, so we can carry these over. Nice thing about the Marine Starboard too is it comes, it's dimensional. So you don't have to worry about planing it or any of that other good stuff. So you're looking at, call it 10 and 1 8th, we'll go 10 and 1 16th. And then this should be let's go nine nine and five eighths. All right, so first cuts are going to be on the table saw. Figure it out. Okay, so crank this sucker up. So what, I, what I'd like to do at this point is if we can put the top back on it and get an idea of exactly how this fits in there when the crate is all together. You want the bottom. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You want all the other sides on there? Nope. Just, just this one. There you go. All right. So we can shave this down. No problem. That's why we do it. Everything else, just to actually, you can shave that part down and then put you can put put a line here and right here, because mm -hmm. that's not going to get in the way of anything. Okay. And you can cut that part out. Absolutely. Now, that is, that's what turns this into a bandsaw cut. Oh, which is fine. We're good for that. Oh, yeah. Adam has all these good luxury. Luxury. I love it all. Brought to you by Herbert Creek. Transfer this on the back. So, all right, so all that is where it should be, right there. Just flip it over. I mean, we kind of have our line already established by that notch. I can cut it from the side.
black and black. My 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 thing that I had an issue with was trying to put the foot not the board itself mm -hmm. was the positioning of the battery mm -hmm. and the distribution hub because that's going to control everything that goes off of that for the rings. Okay. So I was actually going to cut a hole in the side of the, the crate, which I still could. Don't do that. I mean, you've got a gap here, and getting a USB cable is no problem. No problem. And actually carving this notch out yeah, is not definitely gives you the space to do that. Yeah. That's Definitely pull it back because it's so this is like a flat one side flat on one side and really only one side comes up. Okay. There's no more obstruction here than there would have been. Because yeah, when we sand it down, this will be come back. This will go back a little bit. Yeah, we can. I think you want that little bit of wiggle room in there. Um. There's no. There's no reason for everything to be like crazy precisely tight. I have to mark it. I have to figure out where I'm putting this the hub and the battery at. Choose. Two holes. It doesn't even have to need to be. Doesn't even need to be four. Just two two holes that are not going to get in your way. And wing nut. And wing nut. Especially plastic. Yeah. Get big on it. You got gloves on. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't think about that part at all. That's your magic answer right there. A one inch. A one inch bolt would be good enough for disco. Like a, a regular bolt. Oh yeah. I mean the wing nut goes you gotta have something for the wing nut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So this is as I yeah. Yeah. So one inch one inch is more than enough. And then you don't have any extra stuff sticking out and grabbing on your gear. Where's the, uh, the vice? That's not, that didn't come from Harbor Freight. No, it did not. <laughs> that came from Home Depot. Okay, I don't, yeah, whoever sells Milwaukee. Remember kids, safety first. Never change your router bits while your router is plugged in. That's right. That that work. So as far as this one, right? I'll show you. I'll show you a cool trick. Something that I do. Everybody need to pay attention to this, right? You have the back of an item, and you gotta drill precise holes to marry up with exactly where these holes are. But you can't see where the holes are because this is material that you can't see through, right? And you can't see through this either. Show you a trick to get around that. All right, so the trick is that we take our painter's tape, right? <laughs> right? So, painter's tape is, is great for this because it allows for you to, everything sticks together as one unit. And then, what you do is you can press down on the tape and it'll reveal where your holes are that you're wanting to mess with and then you can mark the center point of each one of those too easy take the whole thing off where did I build the pencil this always happens to me all right all right so the next thing that we do is give ourselves our straight line. And notice I'm not using the edge that I cut because there's little waves in there from the bandsaw. So we can mark this. Give yourself a ballpark idea of how far you want uh, the particular you know, screw to be on the end there. And you mark this line. Now, when you pull your tape up, as long as your marks are falling where you want them to be and you don't stretch your tape out too much, right? Mm -hmm. You 
have the ability to transfer your template directly from the back of the thing onto here. So now all I have to do is just drill right straight through and I'm guaranteed that I'm going to line up perfectly on this. I'm so good using paper. Paper works. So but, but, but this is sticky. <laughs> I didn't think about that the other day. All right, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. So now that those are done, we can countersink them back. So this face is down. Those are the corners that we selected. All your holes exactly where they're supposed to be. Alright, so these holes are good. Yeah. You're all lined up there the way you want to be, right? I kind of want to give you a handle. All right. So, for my way of thinking, the, the most important thing that's left to do here is your screws. Yeah. So you do one down here in this corner, right? And one over here in this corner. Should be good to hook. Stop. Two screws, right? One low, one high. Yes. Yeah, right. Dude. Oh, I got some nice machine screws. So that's one. Cool. That's pretty, dude. All right. And then we got the battery that sits down here, right? Once we get some proper fitting screws, in principle, all this is good to go. Look at that. Adds a quarter inch of thickness to the walls of the crate itself. Almost no weight, right? And there's no risk of corrosion or rust, right? This is not going to get waterlogged like pressure treated plywood would. Nice, neat solution. And if you want to take it out, you can take it out and you got a tabletop unit to be able to do soldering, electrical connections, troubleshooting, any of that other good stuff. You don't have to take a whole crate into your into your house or have space for that on a bench top, right? Like you if you got this, you're good to go. Pretty good idea, dude. Pretty I come up with good ideas. I just I, I need to just be the idea thinker. My ideas <laughs> I am the thinker of ideas. I'm the thinker of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> End product, right? It's a whole lot of work to go through to make something relatively simple. But you have a properly dimensioned plate so that we can have a power distribution box and a power source box battery for onboard electronics to go inside of that crate that is now modular. And whenever he has anything that he needs to do, he can just, you know, instead of having to worry about the entire crate, if he ever wants to work on the electronic systems, uh, for the onboard electronics, you can just take this out, and this is now this will now be a unit that can be set on a tabletop, or you know, do whatever you need to do with it. Um, good to go. I'm gonna finish cleaning this up, and then uh, hopefully we'll be good to go. All right, cool. So there you have it. It wasn't a particularly huge or complicated build, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, it's always good to have an opportunity to spend you know, an hour, hour and a half, you know, in your workshop with a friend. Um, again, trying to create a solution. And in this case, documenting it so that maybe it can be something useful for somebody else at some point down the road. Um, yeah. I always struggle to end videos like this one. So I'll just say what I always say. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And remember, it's never too late to care again.